Hello fellow woodworkers, welcome to this week's edition of the Garage Workshop and this week we're going to be... taking this piece of log and turning it into... a wooden tea light holder with my Parkside lathe. Roll the intro. So, in this week's edition of the Garage Workshop, I wanted to return to the Parkside Lay. These have been some of my uh, most viewed videos on the um, channel, and I don't understand why, because they've both been absolute failures. But this week, I am determined to go back and see if I can make something with that lathe. So, I've got this piece of wood. It's been uh, curing indoors for about three months now, I think, and I've tested, tested the moisture content, although it is a little bit moist still uh, in the very, very core. Generally, it's actually quite dried out. So, the plan of action is to see if I can fashion this into some sort of bowl or just anything that looks like it's been properly made on the lay. This is not about an end product. I just want to say that to start with because there's a very good chance this video is, is going to be a fail. I hope it isn't, but there is a good chance. But this is more about um, continuing to develop my understanding, my knowledge of using my Parkside lathe. So I've got a piece of wood. The first thing I'm going to do is sort of cut it down into a slice and then I'm going to put it through the bandsaw see if I can take quite a bit of the bark off because that was the problem and lots of you left me some really fantastic comments after the last video so thank you very much. I'm going to see if I can chop off as much of the bark as I can then I'm going to get it on the lathe. So the first thing to do is to cut this down into a more manageable sized log. Let's do that now. So the first thing I did was uh, cut the log down on the mitre saw and I was incredibly uh, careful doing this one sort of kick back and uh, you could be in a lot of pain and obviously my hand was a lot closer to the blade than I would have liked so I just took my time I did rotate it bit by bit which gave me a slight sort of angle which you'll see later but to be honest the key bit was just getting it to the sort of manageable size that it could go under the band so by the way apologies for the uh, voice raging with a terrible cold at the moment occupational hazard so uh, when I'd cut it down to what I thought was a reasonable uh, depth, I took it over to the bandsaw, and as you can see, uh, you would say that's a perfect cut, uh, but obviously because it isn't straight, some bits just caught on the bandsaw, and actually this blade was a lot better uh, than the last one, it was very taut, and what I just did was, I just spent my time working my way around it and uh, removing as much of the uh, bark as I could. Uh, again, my hands are very, very close to the blade here, which is why you know, I'm taking my time and I think it is really, really important that uh, you do that whenever you're using a piece of equipment. And obviously, if you're not confident, then don't use that piece of equipment. Um, just make sure that you're very, very safe. Uh, I tried it a few ways and sort of rolled it round and got different bits and bobs off. And although it was quite a slow uh, process, I eventually uh, got it to how I wanted it to look. The next stage was to attach the wood uh, to the spindle and I just used some small self-tapping screws um, for this because I find they gave me a great sort of grip last time I used it and it's really really easy and straightforward to set up this um, lathe, parkside lathe. It's really really straightforward. Um, just pop all the screws in, put that on, screw it on, it's a double, double tighten one way or the other uh, and then you're all locked in and ready to go. So after I attached all of those screws I just rolled it on and actually attached it uh, to the lathe but again everything I did I really really took my time to make sure that I got everything as tight as it could be. Here you can see me uh, just attaching it, exactly as I said. Um, <clears throat> it took a little bit longer uh, to get the end piece in, but to be honest with you, that was my own fault. I can't remember where I put the instructions, and I actually forgot uh, how that bit worked, that uh, screw, that, but the bolt that you can see me fiddling with now, I forgot that's how you get it in, um, and how you tighten it up, a bit like my pocket hole uh, jig, to be honest. So, when it was all in, I fired her up, I uh, didn't have run full speed to start with, um, as you can see it's sort of fairly slow, I just wanted to see how the wood uh, would come off and when I was satisfied with that I then uh, turned it up and I was able to remove the wood um, in quite nice large chunks, you can see there the wood's coming off a tree and obviously when I stopped to have a look 
it had taken a lot of the bark off. Now, I'm not sure if you can see it in this video, but I did get quite a few uh, kickbacks, which um, were only small ones, just a little bit about, and that was more about how I'm handling the tool, I think, more than anything else. Just a couple of times, if the end of the blade sort of caught, it just sort of flicked the tool down. But uh, it was very good at taking uh, the wood off. I'm not quite sure what type of tree this is, uh, apologies, but as you can see, it is taking the wood off in quite a nice rate, and you can also see at the end how uneven that end bit is, but we'll come back to that later. But generally, I was uh, putting a really nice, um, a really nice sort of ring through it. When I was happy with that, and it was nice and smooth, I just pivoted uh, the end, and then I was able to cut the inside. Now, I'm not sure if you'll see from the footage here, but I did get caught quite a few times here, and uh, you'll see the chisel sort of jags out of the way. Um, this sort of gouging one, I don't know the correct name for it, sorry, was okay to a point, but I did find that uh, it didn't remove anywhere near as much material as the other one did. And also, when I got near to the middle, the sort of core, then it did, as you saw there, it does sort of kick back or, or jump about a little bit. And obviously, if I press too hard, as I'm doing here, you'll see it sort of burn in. I'm sure this is just sort of user error, and I know somebody in the comments will tell me I'm doing this the wrong way. But to be honest with you, I was being incredibly safe all the way through. When I was getting little kickbacks, I was sort of prepared for it. I had my hands in a nice safe position, and obviously I was wearing uh, gloves. So after a while, I sort of got through that initial um, area where it was sort of kicking back a bit, and I was able to take out a lot more of the internal wood at a quicker speed. The only times I did that sort of then get kickbacks was when I came through the middle, and as you can see, there's a sort of I can only describe it as a nipple in the middle of the wood there. But also, I really started taking the wood back here. I was very conscious that on the side I wanted to leave about a 10mm gap. Um, so I just started taking it more and more. And you can see from the amount of wood that's been uh, cast off that I was really, really starting to go for it. And again, the only times I really had the issue was when I worked on that bit in the middle and I was still getting the occasional kickbacks. I then reverted back to my uh, tool that I'd used initially um, and by now, because I'd sort of gouged out the middle, it was taking the wood out really, really nicely. I was very happy. Did get the old kickback again, um, just as I was crossing the middle, but I was very happy uh, with how much of it had taken back. So I loosened it off and had a look and I was pleased with how it, how it worked out. So I went over to the belt sander. Uh, I don't know if any of you have got this Parkside uh, belt sander. It's the PBTS 37A, but if you see at the top of the picture, can you at the top of the picture, can you see that top band, um, sanding band, is off of the alignment? I followed the instructions, I've tightened it up exactly as it said, and I just cannot get it to stay inside. Anyway, the disc sander bit, I was able to offer it up and roll it round. I was super, super careful here because you can see how close my uh, fingers are and I was very very cautious in fact you can see the sand has moved back a couple of times because it's just slightly popped out of its wedges but it really gave me a nice finish and it took some of the sort of furring of the wood that was off because I think the wood was wood was too moist and it had it sort of looked a bit like a hairy coconut uh, but it took that off I then put it back into the mitre saw and I was so so careful before everyone flames me in the comments I was really careful making this cut. I was very conscious of how close my hand was and I took my time and I rotated and actually cut it into uh, sections. It just wasn't quite enough uh, to go through. But when I'd done that, it was finished. So uh, the project is over and here is my finished uh, tea light holder. So what are my reflections on this project? Well, to be honest with you, it isn't the best um, tea light holder in the world. Um, it's a little bit rough and if you sort of lay it flat, I think it's sort of slightly on one side than the other. But actually, the process of this was more about getting to this stage rather than how it looks. And I'm going to spend some time just levelling it off. And I, you will have seen it. it wasn't the easiest thing to do. 
to cut that in the mitre saw. So I think what I'm going to do is see if I can get it back through the band saw because it's very level on one side and just take that edge off. But I have hollowed out the inside. It's deep enough for a tea light to go on. And the outside shape is really, really smooth. I'm very pleased with how I got that. One of the disadvantages, obviously the wood in the centre, because I've taken quite a lot of wood off, the wood in the centre was actually uh, quite a lot more uh, moist than I expected it to be. I did measure it before and it said something like 23% moisture, which I didn't think would be much, but I've just measured this again and it's like 40 something. But this was in the middle of a log, but the log has been drying for quite a long time. So overall, this was never about how it looked. It was about the process of getting here. I feel much more confident with uh, the lathe and I've got what I think at least is not a failure. Um, so I'm very happy about that. That. So if this is your first time on the Garage Workshop, thank you so much for uh, tuning in and watching the video. Please can ask you to subscribe, like and comment. Uh, if you are a regular viewer, thank you again so much for all your ongoing support and don't forget to like and comment as well. I hope you've had a fantastic Christmas fellow woodworkers and I'll catch you next week on a special end of year edition of the Garage Workshop. Take care fellow woodworkers.